Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant. Today I'm going to be covering this book, Notes from New Zealand, subtitled A Book of Travel and Natural History. The cover photographs are by Edward Kanzi, cover design by Raquel Jaramillo, and it's listed as a travel and natural history book, which you know, are the two main terms in the subtitle itself. So, the original listed price on the back cover was $12.95. And this book is from the early 90s, 1992. So it is older than me. It's a first printing. And I bought it for $6, and by the look of it, there's a sticker with someone's name on it. It says, um, one, uh, Yvonne M. Judge. This book has since passed into my hands through a used bookstore. This is going to be a short rant, not only because the book isn't terribly long, it's only about 200 pages, but because it's about a content I'm not particularly jazzed about. It's akin to Peter Mathiasen's Snow Leopard in that the author is a relatively well-off white man traveling in a country he doesn't belong to and whose travels are, unlike Peter Mathiasen's, mostly mundane. I think kind of akin to... A Stranger in the Forest, which I haven't ranted about on this channel yet, and um, I think kind of like Tracks by Robin Davison, there's this subset of travel and natural history books that are written by white people in the 70s to the 90s that are about them traveling to distant regions and then having not terribly fascinating adventures. Robin Davison's Tracks is about crossing the desert in Australia, which isn't inherently fascinating, except for the fact that she does it on camelback, which is a bit more involved than just driving from point A to point B and so on and so forth. A Stranger in the Forest, which I haven't ranted about, is set in the 70s or the 60s, I think, and is about a man's travels in the uh, New Guinea area. And so, there's all sorts of adventures, quote-unquote, that are kind of colonial in theme, and this one is kind of that way, but not really. He's traveling in parts of New Zealand that are settled, that are suburban, that are semi-rural, that have gardens and small walking trails. It's nothing like traveling the mountains that you see in some of these you know, in Lord of the Rings, he's not going out to those mountains and traveling. He's doing a lot of the adventures relatively close to a the place he's staying. What I do like about this is that the preface discusses that this is the story of the other land down under, New Zealand, um, and his own relationship with that land. He carried the usual tourist's longings for good food, potable water, and Kodachrome scenery. I also brought along a secret desire I wanted to find and see, not in a zoo, but wild and free, three animals, the flightless bird known as the kiwi, of which there are three species, any one would do, a strange and primitive reptile, neither lizard nor snake, nor turtle nor crocodilian, known as the tuatara, which lives nowhere else in the world save for a few obscure islands off the New Zealand coast, and at least one of the island's three rare endemic frogs. 
The New Zealand frogs, the last survivors of a nearly extinct lineage, are primitive beasts. They lack vocal sacs and eardrums, make no sounds to speak of, and live under rocks where they are rarely found. The frogs were so elusive that the original Polynesian inhabitants of New Zealand occupied the country for a millennium without detecting their existence. Somehow I got it into my head that if I tracked down these creatures, the kiwi, the tuatara, the frog, I would get to know far more deeply than the average tourist, a land reputed to be among the wildest and most beautiful on earth. So he quit his post, stored all of his possessions, and booked a flight to New Zealand. My policy, always choose the national airline of the country to which you're traveling because it has the most to lose from a crash. He made three trips to New Zealand over a span of five years, during the course of which he made a flock of personal discoveries, rewarding friendships, and saw some of the world's most unusual plants and animals and returned home without permanent wounds or disabling diseases. So that's in the preface. In a note on the text, he discusses that the, the original inhabitants of the New Zealand islands were the Maori, they were Polynesian, and spoke a tongue closely akin to that of the settlers of such places as Hawaii, Tahiti, and Samoa. He then describes that 82% of the New Zealanders trace their ancestry to England and Europe. Most of the remaining are recent immigrants from Samoa, the Cook Islands, Tahiti, and Tonga, and that today, in 1992, the Maori make up about 12% of New Zealand's population. He then discusses how to pronounce some of the words that are written in the Maori language, and then about plurals, Maori words are plural and singular at the same time, Noah Webster notwithstanding, one Maori, a hundred Maori, one Kiwi, a thousand Kiwi, one Tuatara, a hundred Tuatara. In the text, I have made an exception to this rule for a bird, or rather unusual parrot known as the Kea. Although Kea is a proper plural, I have never heard a New Zealander say anything other than Keas. So, as chaos, they will appear. And then he says, If errors, significant omissions, or distortions have crept into the text, they are unintentional and the responsibility solely of the author. And a lot of these adventures are pretty uh, mundane. One of them on page 84 ends with, My neighbor on the train to Christ Church finds this amusing. So he's traveling through public transportation. He's, he's staying with friends. And it's not these grand adventures. He's going to parks, but they're national parks to find the kiwi, the tuatara, the, um, the frogs. On page 141, he discusses Auckland, how the 300-mile flight from Wellington to Auckland, he looked down upon an unbroken fabric of green. There were no clouds, no smog, no cities. Most of North Island has long been cleared of bush, but the land that was opened up has been devoted almost entirely to raising sheep and cattle, and to the growing of crops such as radiata pine, kiwi fruit, and oranges. Below the airplane, there were few sprawling cities and no signs of heavy industry. He describes his arrival at Auckland International Airport, and he's surprised he does not have a hangover. And how they had, he and his buddy had split a uh, Glen Fittich, and in keeping with tradition, drained it before midnight. But, like I said, a lot of these stories are him traveling from point A to point B and going through modern or contemporary forms of transportation that, in my opinion, just aren't really interesting. So, while the book was fun enough for its natural history, and he describes the Tuatara and the frogs pretty well, how the frogs are believed to be descended from salamanders, and how these frogs seem to have muscles for moving their tails despite lacking tails, and it's really interesting, the natural history he discusses, it's just not very involved. He sees them, but he's not researching them, and so he doesn't have a personal relationship with them. It's just a goal to see these creatures and to 
bloat the text with descriptions of them and their natural history. So, I appreciate this book. I paid $6 for it, and I think I got my money's worth out of it. But I don't really like this book. And it, like a couple others on my shelves that I'm holding for a bit later, are very similar in style and kind of boring because of it. It's a lot of white man goes somewhere and with their money is able to experience travel in that region. It's not the story of someone who lives there, who grew up there. It's not the story of really living in that region. It's kind of tourism. It's temporary. It's not a permanent citizen's perspective of those regions. So, in essence, I feel like it's a fun book if all you want is a calm reader you leave it on like the coffee table and pick it up every now and then and read it. I think it's worth it in that way. I don't think it's worth it reading it from cover to cover. And I don't think I have it in me to read this book again cover to cover. It's just not as fun as so many other books on my shelves. So, yeah. That is Notes from New Zealand. And I hope if you do check this out, you have a better experience with it than I did. Anyway, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant.